Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you how I cured my pup's rash in one week. Now clearly there's a large amount of clickbait that went into that title. Uh, there are obviously a lot of extenuating circumstances, addenda, notes, and all of that, and I'm going to be going into the entire story uh, to see how much of this will apply to you, how much you're able to use. Um, but as a measure of good faith, I have put everything in the description um, that I ate, that I took, or that I did, um, and I'm going to just leave that there for you. You can go ahead and scroll down, take a look at it, take notes, start writing your comments uh, down below while you listen to my story. Welcome to Ganshi Plans, where I strive to keep things real, which is my way of saying I, I put on some mascara for you today. This is my bedroom. I cleaned the area that you can see right now uh, because I don't have any kind of special setup. I mostly like planner content here. On my channel but I did make a lot of pregnancy content for my second pregnancy uh, which is the one where I had a really terrible pups rash and I wanted to follow up because here in my third pregnancy um, I started to get it again and so I'm going to tell you that story today I'm going to tell you everything that I researched found did and how I was able to clear the rash up I haven't had no itching in the last three weeks two weeks um, and it seems to be gone and I feel confident that if it were to come back, I would be able to nip it in the bud again. So we'll start from the beginning. With my first pregnancy, everything was fine. <laughs> With my second pregnancy, I started to get um, a pup's rash around 38 weeks, near the end of 38 weeks, almost 39. So I spent about a week and a half with the most miserable rash. If you came to this video because you're in the same place, like you know, you know, and everybody uh, who has made videos about this, we know, and I am so, so sorry for you. Um, I'm just here to tell you that there might be some relief. Um, I'm going to share with you all the resources that I found, and I hope that you'll be able to find some measure of relief before your delivery comes. Um, because it was towards the end of my pregnancy and all of the things I was saying were just, it comes at the end and then delivery will cure it. It didn't really, I have to be honest, delivery didn't 100% cure my rash. The good news and the hope I have for you is that while I was in labor, like from the minute I went into labor until about an hour after delivery, I had no itching whatsoever. It didn't bother me. I still had the rash, I think, but I didn't have any itching and it didn't interfere with my unmedicated, unmedicated VBAC at all. So that was something. The itching came back for a little bit. It was milder and it started to taper off, but it did come back um, starting about an hour or two after delivery. And it took a few weeks to completely clear back to zero. Um, I made an entire video about that journey, that experience. There, uh, there I'll link that here in the corner. <laughs> I'll also for you show you quickly. Sorry, here's a photo of how it was at its worst. Here is the one photo I took from this most recent pregnancy. As you can see, it's not anywhere near as bad. I got, uh, with my first pregnancy, rash all over my arms, between my fingers, my legs, between my toes, my whole belly, um, around my back and my butt. It was miserable. I, they say, right, they say that for one thing, you're not going to get it or you're more likely to get it if you're having a boy, if it's your first pregnancy or if you're having multiples. None of those risk factors applied to that second pregnancy, but I got it anyway. They also say that if you get it once, you're not going to get it again. And I'm here to say that's actually not true. I'm not saying you won't get it again. And I hope for you that you won't get it again. Um, but I did. At least I think I did. So this is where some of those caveats and addendums come in. Um, I was not diagnosed by a doctor this time because I cleared it up between appointments. Um, I was 29 to 31 weeks around the time I was having some itching and dealing with it. And I didn't have an appointment during that window. I didn't talk to a doctor. Um, I didn't show the doctor the picture that I just showed you, which was barely anything, tiny couple bumps. And that was probably the worst of it. Um, so it wasn't a confirmed diagnosis the second time. It felt the same way it did when it started to come on with the first time, which is why I started to frantically uh, search online for anything I could. Because like I said, the first time I got it at like 39 weeks, 
I was miserable because I was 39 weeks pregnant anyway. I was miserable because I was itchy. I was just trying to get through to delivery as quickly as possible. For one thing, because I would have had to have a C-section otherwise. Um, they weren't going to induce me because I was a TOLAC. Um, so there was only so much I could do. I had the Triamcimolone cream that the doctor gave me. Um, I applied that topically. I used ice packs and I, um, I wore like a long sleeve shirt that I got wet and ringed out and like wore and just having that cool against my skin helped. Um, it was like a hundred and something degrees in the middle of uh, Indian summer here in Southern California. It was ridiculous temperature wise, but like I was still wearing long sleeve shirts and skinny jeans because it felt better to me to have something against my skin as opposed to anything that would be loose or could be gently sort of caressing my skin and making the itching start up again. So that's what I wore um, for the first one. So the second time I'm going to give you the whole rundown of what happened. Um, it was around Valentine's Day. I was 29 weeks when I started to get a little bit suspicious. And I have to say, I had actually suspicions from very early on in my pregnancy. I don't think there was ever a point where it totally, well, I don't want to say it never went away, but there were moments like between pregnancies where I would feel a bit of an itching that was the same. Um, and it was only for like a day or whatever. And I felt some of that around the beginning of my pregnancy. And I'm like, oh gosh, please don't come back. But it was like for a day and it would go away. Well, it was sort of a few days of some itching you where you catch yourself scratching and you go, huh, that doesn't feel right. Um, that's reminding me of when I had pups and that's not good news. I was able to use hy uh, hydrocortisone and pine tar soap, not in that order. I would wash it off with pine tar soap and then apply hydrocortisone, put my shirt back down and that would deal with it. Um, and so it was only just a little bit. I was feeling it around the bottom of my belly, a little bit into my hips. Um, and I started to then notice a few days into it, some little red bumps. It wasn't as bad. And I had, I have read, I found one source and I don't know if I'll be able to find that source again that says when it does recur, it's less likely to recur. But if it does recur, that it's more likely to be milder the second time. So again, hope, I guess, if you also like me are, are dealing with a second case of it. Um, so that could be part of my success this time. Um, but like I said, I was 29 weeks. So I knew that I would not be able to deal with this for an additional 11 weeks of pregnancy, um, that I needed to do something different besides just topical treatments. Um, I also had remembered from the first time that I had seen some people on like Reddit saying that they had managed to cure it that had gone away. Um, I figured this, this all seemed to be milder cases as well, to be fair, um, but that they were able to actually make it go away uh, if it had come earlier in their pregnancy. So I went looking for all of those. Um, I looked and I found a few videos on YouTube that were like the starting point of what I'm going to describe as my regimen. And I'm going to link those down below. There's one specifically that she, there's a blog post that she made and um, a video, a few different videos about the things that she was eating and doing. Um, she had a whole diet regimen that she was following. Um, that was supposed to be basically based around the idea that it's somehow related to your liver. Um, I have had my bile acids tested since and they are normal. So I don't know, maybe since it's already clear, that's fine. I don't know if you can see, actually, I've got a bruise from my <laughs> blood work. Um, so anyway, but <laughs> I, um, I found the, all the stories I could. They're not that many. It's a lot of word of mouth stuff and there's not a lot of medical documentation with a lot of hope attached to it. But, um, it seems to me from the stories I've read that cases that clear themselves up tend to last about four to six weeks. And even sometimes cases that start near the end of pregnancy will take that four to six weeks, you know, into the postpartum period to clear up. So it could just be self-limiting that way. So maybe if I hadn't touched it, it would have cleared itself up in four to six weeks, but I wanted to be as aggressive as possible. As a result, I tried every single thing and I don't know which ones worked. 
So they are all on the list. If you want to do exactly what I did, maybe one of them will work for you. One of them worked for me. At least one of them worked for me. Um, and I wasn't able to determine exactly which ones because it, it cleared up quickly enough and hasn't come back that I wasn't able to do a lot of like testing. I tried to wean things off in a certain order, but it never came back. So I don't know uh, which thing was like the magic bullet. But um, I started taking remedies February 18th, uh, the day before I turned 30 weeks. And by February 25th at 30 weeks, um, everything like had there's barely any itching on two tiny little spots right just north uh northeast of my belly button and then it, it totally went away after that so here is everything that i did for my regime my regimen my schedule um, every single day this is what i was eating i would wake up in the morning and the first thing i would do was drink a pint glass full of lemon water some people said it was supposed to be warm. I got it straight from the fridge, whatever. Um, then wait 15, at least 15 to 30 minutes and then drink um, a vegetable juice. I started with like a green juice that I got from Trader Joe's, which was pretty good. Um, and then I tried V8, which tastes like tomato soup, whatever. Um, I had heard a lot of things about V8 juice being good. So I went ahead and got that because it's a little bit cheaper than getting the fancy stuff from Trader Joe's. Either way, something that has celery juice in it was what I was looking for. Then wait an extra 15 to 30 minutes before having breakfast. Um, for breakfast, you want to keep things dairy-free and fat-free. Basically, low-protein, um, gluten-free, I guess, if you can. And then, so what I had was a coffee with a splash of almond milk. And I had overnight oats made with almond milk. I put walnuts in, and then I had it with a banana. Um, you're supposed to, I guess, avoid dried fruits in the morning, have fresh fruits. I was also trying to see if a banana a day would deal with my, um, nighttime leg cramps as a separate issue. And as that side issue, if you're having those, which again, probably a lot of us are, um, I expected the bananas to help sooner, but they actually took like a week or more before I started to see results. So I think that's why... I had just suffered through leg cramps with two previous pregnancies because just taking a banana a day for like a couple of days, it's not going to show you a result that night. It's going to be like in a couple of weeks, um, but it might help you because the leg cramps have dramatically reduced since a couple of weeks after I started eating one banana every day with my breakfast. So that was breakfast. Then throughout the day, I was snacking a lot and I would make sure to snack on two apples, a little baggie of celery, um, about four or five uh, medjool dates. And then I made a little like a baggie of like a trail mix of walnuts, dried blueberries and dried cranberries. The idea is going for things that are anti-inflammatory or antioxidant. Um, it was a lot of snacks, but the thing about it too is like, I am a snacker and I usually will snack on something that's like salty, sweet, processed, or like candy, um, not healthy snacks. So at least all of the snacking was healthy snacks. And I think that made a big difference, just changing my diet, honestly. Um, and then in the afternoon or evening, I would drink about four ounces of black cranberry juice, which is another thing that I've seen to touted elsewhere besides this one video. And then also um, I would, before bed, have a cup of dandelion and nettle tea. So I'm going to actually, I brought some of the stuff. This is the V8. I got low sodium because why not? And it was available. Um, yeah, my one and a half year old loves it. I have this one. I didn't end up needing the second bottle um, because the rash went away and I figured I would save it if it comes back. This is the black cherry juice. You don't want tart red cherry. You want black cherry. Um, I had to get this from the health food store. I went to Sprouts. It's not cheap. This bottle has four four ounce servings in it. Sorry, eight ounce servings. I had like a highball um, glass of it, a little bit lower than that. So it did last me about five servings. I was kind of rationing it a little bit. This is like $7.
for four servings. Um, so just keep that in mind and also keep in mind, it made me so flatulent. I made my three-year-old cry with how smelly my farts were. Um, so it would, all evening I was making ridiculously smelly farts and it doesn't even have fiber in it. So I, I don't know what to tell you, but look out for that. If it works though, it's worth it. Um, and it tastes fine. It's a little tart, um, a little bit viscous, but you know, it's cherry juice. There you go. These were the teas I got. They're both from traditional medicinals. They've never steered me wrong. I like their mother's milk tea. Um, so I got the, if you can see that organic roasted dandelion root and nettle leaf. Um, they're both supposed to be good for your liver, one or the other. So I went ahead and just brewed both tea bags in together. Um, it didn't taste bad. I'm not sure which one I liked better because I haven't tried them separately. Um, then I, in addition to the diet stuff, I uh, was also taking a couple of meds. This is something that you are going to find a little bit of documentation about. I was taking Claritin. This is 24 hour Claritin. I took this once in the morning, every morning. And then um, this is Pepsid. Uh, Claritin is uh, Loratadine and Peptid is Fematidine. Take this twice a day. This one, I specifically got info from one video that I've also linked below. Um, she said her doctor told her to take Pepsid twice a day and that that in and of itself cured her pups. Um, I was seeing results before I added these to my regimen. So something in the diet was working, but once I added these two, it wiped out the rest of it even quicker, I feel. So this accelerated the healing that I was having. My understanding is that you want to take a, again, no, I'm not a medical professional, but from my research, and I've researched just, a, I did some Googling about um, H1 and H2 blockers. So there's two different kinds of histamine that cause the itching reaction from stuff like allergies or whatever, right? So Claritin and like Flonase and you know, all the different ones, um, uh, Benadryl, they're all a H1 blocker. And then Pepsid is actually an H2 blocker, which I never knew. Um, so this is also, this is pre for preventing and treating heartburn. So the nice thing when I was on this, I didn't have any heartburn and I didn't feel the need to take Tums, which I usually take as needed, usually in the evenings at bedtime. Um, so at least I didn't have to take Tums. But um, so having an H1 and H2 blocker at the same time, um, the H1 can deal with the itching and the H2 will deal with the rash and keeping the rash contained and possibly shrinking it and dealing with the red bumps and stuff like that. So that combo I do think is very uh, beneficial, but obviously since it's drugs, you can talk to your doctor. Both of those are considered safe for pregnancy. Um, they just say to only take like one kind of each, only one kind of a histamine one blocker and one kind of histamine two. So you could take a different allergy medication other than Claritin. Um, I mean, I went with the non-drowsy because, you know, I have life to live. Um, and so that was also a big help. I'm going to post those links down below. Like I said, there's also a third video that is a topical treatment that I never tried, but she swore by in this video. So I'm going to link that below as well if you want it. Um, and I will try to find the result when I googled about taking H1 and H2 blockers together and how they help. Um, that was the result I found it wasn't for pups specifically. It was for like just having a rash that had no cause. I was learning all kinds of medical jargon. So um, that's going to be a little bit more of a difficult read, but it gave me a little bit more confidence in what was going on. And then obviously I did all my research and confirmed that I wasn't taking anything else that was going to interfere with those or cause any kind of reaction and that they're safe for pregnancy. But I did, those were the first things I stopped once I was cleared of all of my um, symptoms. So uh, in addition to all of that, after a couple days of my diet, the itching started to go down. And as a result, um, I wasn't feeling the need to use pine tar soap anymore, though I still had some. I had it in my um, shower and I used, I took like 
one hot shower and I use the pine tar soap. Um, you know, they say not to take a hot shower. I'm sure you've already, this isn't your first pups video. They say to take cool showers and that the hot water will like inflame the redness and cause the itching to come more. And I did notice that, that it was super red and my daughter even noticed it um, when I took the warm shower. But then I took another hot shower like a week later and there was nothing. Um, so early on I was using pine tar soap. I was using hydrocortisone when I needed it. Um, but once the itching started to go down, um, I felt like I could risk using just like a normal lotion to hydrate um, without it aggravating my itching. And so this is the uh, moisturizer I use on my bump. Um, I used this with my first and then I didn't use it very much with my second and I thought maybe that was the reason like I didn't get stretch marks, stretch marks with my first I did with my second didn't get pups with my first did with my second I like Palmer's shea butter so this is the raw shea balm formula and I'm three pregnancies in and uh, it's still like half full so I do like this stuff but it's greasy so I only use it at bedtime um, but having some moisture is good and helpful. Um, another thing that was already in my regimen, I was put on vitamin C after I had COVID um, uh, just to boost my immunity, I guess. But I have heard that high doses of vitamin C have been known to help with pups, um, but it didn't stop me from getting it. So there you go. Um, I just, yeah, wanted to list all that stuff for you. Like I said, it's all in the description. Um, I hope that adding one or more of these will help you feel a little bit of relief sometime between now and delivery. If you got it early like me, just know that like there could be relief before delivery. You're not going to have to, you hopefully will not have to go months dealing with the horrible rash. Um, if you're close to delivery, I hope that maybe adding some of this stuff to your routine will give you some relief before the baby comes and help you focus on just your, yourself and your family and your baby um, when that time comes. If not, know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I am really sorry that you're dealing with this. Um, thank you guys for tuning into my channel. Uh, check out my previous videos. I already linked the one going over everything. There are also two other videos that happened during that period and you can see me suffering through it at 39 weeks. Um, and that is all I have to share with you today. Comment below with uh, your story, where you are, how you found this video. And if any of these work for you, please let me know. Please let everyone else who's come to this video know that they're not alone um, and that there might be some hope. Have a great day and a happy pregnancy. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.